1950, Alan Turing wrote the paper that formulated the Turing test. Yes. And he opened the paper with the question, can machines think? So what do you think? Can machines think? Let me oh, ask you this oh, question. Ab absolutely. Machines can think, um, certainly as well as humans can think, um, right? We're meat machines. Um, just because they're not currently made out of meat is just, you know, an engineering solution uh, decision um, uh, and so on. So, um, um, of course, of course, machines can think. I think that there was a lot of um, damage done by people uh, misunderstanding uh, Turing's imitation game um, and um, uh, focus on trying to trying to get a chat bot to uh, fool other people into thinking it was human um, and so on, that that's, that's not a terrible test in and of itself, but it shouldn't be your one and only test for intelligence. So do you, uh, in terms of tests of intelligence, uh, you know, with the Lobner Prize, which is a very kind of, you want to say, a more strict formulation of the Turing test as originally formulated, and then there's something like Alexa Prize, which is more, I would say, a more interesting formulation of the test, which is like, uh, ultimately the metric is how long does a human want to talk to the AI system? <laughs> so it's like, if you, the, the goal is you want it to be 20 minutes. It's basically not just have a convincing um, conversation, but more like a compelling one or a fun one or an interesting one. I mean, that, that seems like more to the spirit maybe of, um, of what uh, Turing was imagining, but what for you do you think in the space of tests is a is a good test? Like what, when you see a system based on psych that passes that test, you'd be like, "Damn, we've created something special here." the The test has to be something involving depth of reasoning and recursiveness of reasoning, the ability to answer repeated why questions about the answer you just gave. Um, it's, it's how many why questions in a row can you keep answering? So, so, something like that. And um, just, also, just have like a young, curious child and an AI system. And how long will an AI system uh, last before it uh, wants to quit? Yes. And again, that's not the only test. Yeah. Another one has to do with argumentation. In other words, here's a proposition. Um, come up with pro and con arguments uh, for it and uh, try and give me convincing arguments on both sides. Uh, and uh, so that's that's another important kind of ability that um, the system needs to be able to exhibit in order to really be intelligent, I think. So the, there's certain, I mean, w if you look at IBM Watson and like certain impressive accomplishments for very specific test, almost like a demo, right? Um, there is some, uh, like uh, I talked to the guy who led the um, the Jeopardy effort, and there's some kind of hard coding heuristics uh, tricks that you try to pull it all together to make the thing work in the end for this thing, right? That seems to be one of the lessons with AI is like that's the fastest way to get a solution that's pretty damn impressive. So, so here here's what I would say is that. As impressive as that was, it made some mistakes. But more importantly, many of the mistakes it made were mistakes which no human would have right. made. Yeah. Um, and so part of the, the, the new or augmented Turing tests would have to be, and the mistakes you make are ones which humans don't basically look at and say, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for example... There was a um, a question about which 16th century Italian politician, blah, blah, blah. And Watson said, Ronald Reagan. So most Americans would have gotten that question wrong, mm -hmm. but they would never have said Ronald Reagan as an answer. Right. Because, you know, among the things they know is that he lived relatively recently and people don't really live 400 years and you know things like that. So that that's, I think, um, a very important thing, which is um, if it's making mistakes which no normal sane human would have made, 
then that's a really bad sign. And if it's not making those kinds of mistakes, then that's um, a good sign. And I don't think it's any one very, very simple test. I think it's all of the things you mentioned, all the things I mentioned. There's really a battery of tests, which together, if it passes almost all of these tests, it would be hard to argue that it's not intelligent. And if it fails some several of these tests, it's really hard to argue that it really understands what it's doing and that it really is generally intelligent. So to pass all of those tests, you know, we've talked a lot about psych and knowledge and reasoning. Do you think this AI system would need to have some other human-like elements? For example, a body or a physical manifestation in this world? And uh, another one, which seems to be fundamental to the human experience is consciousness. The subjective experience of what it's like to actually be you. Do you think he needs those to be able to pass all of those tests and to achieve general intelligence? It's a good question. I think in the case of a body, uh, no. I know there are a lot of people uh, like Penrose who would have uh, disagreed with me and so on there, um, and, and others. But no, I don't think it needs to have a body in order to be intelligent. I think that it needs to be able to talk about uh, having a body and having sensations and having emotions and so on. It doesn't actually have to have all of that, uh, but it has to understand it in the same way that Helen Keller was perfectly intelligent and able to talk about um, colors and sounds and um, shapes and um, and so on, um, even though um, she didn't directly experience all the same things that uh, the rest of us do. So knowledge of it and being able to correctly um, make use of that um, is certainly an important facility, but actually having a body, um, if you believe that, that's just a kind of religious or mystical belief. You can't really um, argue for or against it, I suppose. Um, it's it's just something that some people that some people believe. What about the like an extension of the body, which is consciousness? I mean, like it feels like something to be here. Sure, but. You know what? What does that really mean? It's like, well, if I talk to you, you say things which make me believe that you're conscious. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm conscious, but that's you know, you're just taking my word for it now. Uh, but in the same sense, psych is conscious in that same sense already, where of course it understands it's a computer program. It understands where and wh when it's running. It understands who's talking to it. It understands what its task is, what its goals are, what its current problem is that it's working on. It understands how long it's spent on things, what it's tried. It understands what it's done in the past, um, and so on. Um, and uh, you know, if if we want to call that consciousness, then yes, psych is already conscious. But I don't think that I would ascribe anything. Uh, mystical to that again, some people mm. would, but I would I would say that you know other than other than our own personal experience of consciousness, um, we're just treating everyone else in the world, um, uh, so to speak, um, at their word about being conscious. And so if um, if a computer program, if an AI is able to um, exhibit um, all the same kinds of um, uh, response as you would expect of a conscious entity. Um, then um, you know doesn't doesn't it deserve the label of consciousness just as much? 